Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna do a tutorial on the Ableton Wavetable plugin, which is this guy right here. So it ships with Ableton Live Suite and it's a Wavetable synthesizer as its name suggests. So before we get into that, let's quickly go over the basics of what Wavetable synthesis even is. Instead of having one generated waveform, you have a whole, what's called a table, which is a collection of lots of different waveforms and there is sort of an index that points into that table. So wherever you are in the table, that's the wave that will be uh, cycling. So imagine having a table or a collection of waveforms, like a sawtooth, a sine wave, and a, a square wave, for example. As you point at the sine wave, it produces a sine wave. As you point in a different part of the table, for example, if you point at the square wave, it'll produce a square wave. The advantage of wavetable is twofold. One, you get to create any kind of waveform, so you're not stuck with what you can produce in an analog world, like simple uh, waves. You can effectively draw any shape you want to create your single cycle, and you'll see in, uh, shortly, in, as I go through the waveforms here, there's a huge slew of waveforms, anything from noise to kind of vowel sounds to even the traditional stuff like sine waves. The other advantage of uh, wavetables is not only can you create these complex waves that you can't find anywhere else, you can actually have a whole collection of them in a table and then you can morph between them and that's really where the power comes in a wavetable. All right, so here's what it looks like. It might be a little daunting and overwhelming at first. There's tons of little buttons and knobs and widgets, but let's break it down into its basic components and you'll find that the synth is actually quite simple once you do that. So you start, you have two oscillators on the left here, oscillator one and two, and each one can be toggled independently with this little box here. Moving on in the signal chain, you have this dual filter module here. And again, you can toggle both filters on and off independently. So you can bypass them completely or you can engage them both. And then they both have tons of different settings, which I'll cover in a sec here. Finally, you have this modulation hub here with three tabs. First, you have your sources. So these are the tools you can use to create change in your sound. And there's five of them to choose from. You have three ADSR envelopes, and then you have two very flexible LFOs. And again, I'll cover all this in detail in a sec here. Then you have the matrix tab, and this is how you assign these mod sources to different parameters. So for example, if you wanted to assign an envelope to a filter, this is where you would do it. And then finally, you have a MIDI tab, which is very similar to the matrix, except instead of assigning the built-in modulation sources like the envelopes LFOs, here you're assigning MIDI parameters like a velocity on a keyboard or aftertouch. And I'll demo this in a sec. You may have noticed there's these two kind of panels on the left and right here. So the one on the right is just general global controls like volume, unison, and I'll cover that in a sec. And then on the left here, you have a sub oscillator, very simple controls. All right, so let's look through oscillator one and demystify what we're seeing in this box here. So if you remember, a wavetable is just a table, a collection of different waveforms. And you can see those waveforms here and I can slide through them by holding my mouse down on this section here or by using this little slider here. So if I play a note, you can hear what the sound sounds like as we're morphing between the sine wave and this sort of semi-triangular rectangular wave here. <laughs> And this is just one table. So remember, a table is a collection of waves, but you can actually change different tables. And there are categories and subcategories. So there are tons of different tables to choose from. And the way you cycle those is this section on top here. So here you have your categories. You have basic, uh, complex, distortion, filter. There's tons of different categories. And then for each category, there's a whole set of subcategories here. So you can imagine how much kind of timbral possibilities there are here. Right now, we're in the category called basics and subcategory basic shapes. And so here we're seeing your standard kind of subtractive synth waveforms, which are not very interesting because you can get those in other synthesizers. But then you can get into some crazy stuff where the shapes start getting really wacky. And as you can see, when you freeze and you pick one of the waveforms, it just sounds like a standard wave. And then you could pick a different one. But then as you morph through them, as you're playing, you get really interesting timbral shifts. And then really the power of a wavetable send comes in modulating this parameter, which is called the position in the wavetable. And we'll cover that in a sec, but right now let's just go over the basics. Uh, continuing up here, you have these little arrows and all these do is cycle through these as well. So you don't have to keep clicking in here. Up here, you have a way to toggle between different representations of how you're visualizing this table here. The first one, which is the one we're looking at, gives you sort of a top-down kind of row-based view of what the waves are and where time goes from left to right. And then here you have time going clockwise and the waves are kind of 
radially going outwards. And this doesn't change the sound or anything, it's just a different way to visualize the waveform. That same exact functionality, you're just cycling through the collection of waves. Over on the left here, you have your standard pan and volume controls. You can pan the oscillator left and right. And I'm double clicking to reset it in case you're curious. And then finally you have your volume. So of course there's a master volume here for the whole synth, but this is a volume slider for this oscillator specifically. So if you have two oscillators, you can kind of change the relative levels between them. All right, down at the bottom here, you have a semitone adjustment and a detune in sense. And this again is specific to this oscillator. So you can slightly detune it compared to the other oscillator or pitch it an octave down or stuff like that. And then finally you have this effects section. So this isn't in the traditional effects like reverb or anything like that. These are kind of wave shaping and morphing effects to alternate the specific waveforms in the oscillator. So not only can you change the tons of different waveforms here, you can actually go and sculpt the waveform even further. So it's really kind of an elaborate playground for morphing waveforms. And you can effectively build an entire synthesizer just using this oscillator section and ignoring the rest. Uh, I mean, you're probably gonna wanna use some modulation, but effectively you don't even need the filter because the timbral characters you can get out of just the oscillator section is super vast. So let me demo that real quick. I'm gonna reset this back to our basic shapes because it's the most easy to demonstrate. So if I switch to my sine wave here, you have three different effects. One is FM, which stands for frequency modulation. And this is in sort of a full on FM synthesizer, but it's just a convenient way to add an extra oscillator just to modulate your oscillator that you're viewing here. And you have a few controls here. You have tune, which is the frequency of the modulating oscillator or the modulator and then you have amount which is the amount of fm you want and that's basically it so as you're doing this you can actually visualize it so if i increase the amount here you can hear that So again, it's just one of the tools to be able to sculpt the waveforms. And that's how I like to think of this wavetable synth and wavetable synthesis in general is that really you're spending most of your time kind of crafting and morphing and modulating the actual oscillator section. And that's kind of the bread and butter of a wavetable synthesizer is you're just folding and bending and kind of twisting and cycling through the different tables, interpolating between them. A lot of the action happens there and, and a wavetable synthesizer is very powerful in terms of evolving textures and kind of changing sounds. It's really nice. It gives you so much control to change timbres of stuff over time compared to other synthesizers. All right, so moving on down, you have a classic, which gives you classic standard uh, things that you would find in like an analog synth, like pulse width modulation and a hard sync. And the hard sync works by having this kind of hidden second oscillator that you're not, you don't have control over, but it's just used to kind of reset and hard sync here. So again, pulse width modulation. You're probably familiar with pulse width modulation on a square wave, but here you can do it for any of the waveforms. And all it's doing is effectively adding kind of a DC component of staticness at the end and making the wave thinner effectively. And then you have this sync thing. So that's cool. And then you have modern at the end where you get warp and sort of a wave folding. So if I reset those. So you can see how crazy you can get just with the oscillator section. I mean, we started off with just a sine wave here and there's no modulation or changes that are happening or anything. So imagine going through some of these other crazy waveforms, like just picking, look at how insane this looks. And then imagine folding this now. And to the left of the oscillators, you have this sub oscillator and you can toggle that by pushing this button. You bring it up with this gain knob. You have this tone control, which just adds more harmonic content. And then you can choose between one octave lower, two octaves lower, or just flat zero. And then you can transpose it with semitones. So I'm gonna turn that off. Fairly simple, it's just a nice way if you wanna add a kind of a clean tone to beef up your sounds. All right, so now that we've covered the sound generators, which are our oscillators and sub oscillator, we go into the filter section. And again, you have two different filters. You can turn them both on or off independently. And they're both identical and they come with different kinds of filter shapes and characters. 
and then you have your standard control. So let's quickly go over the front panel and see what's going on here. So again, if you turn them both on, you have a way to determine how the, the oscillators are routed through the filters. So if you pick serial in this drop down here, it'll go through filter one first, and then the output of filter one will go through filter two. So effectively, it routes everything through both filters in serial fashion. Parallel means that the filters are both used at the same time independently. And then split means that oscillator one goes through filter one and oscillator two goes through filter two. So I'm gonna put it back to serial and I'm gonna turn off filter two just so that we can demo this here. Down here you have controls over the frequency and the resonance for both filters. So one on the left and two on the right. Alternatively, you can just use this little uh, drawing here to change these parameters, which I find more intuitive because you can quickly visualize what's going on. So if we go over the characters up here, you can pick different types of filters. So you're probably familiar with all the standard shapes. Uh, you have low pass, high pass, band pass, notch, and then you have this morph filter, which you can morph between high pass and low pass. To the left of that, you have this switch that turns the slope between 12 and 24 decibels. And then finally, you have these different characters or kind of algorithms of filters. Clean is the filter that is used in the EQ8 Ableton plugin. And then down here, you have a bunch of kind of analog modeling uh, filters, all based on different synthesizers, or most of them. I think this one's based on the Oscar, the MS-20, SMP, I think is a unique Ableton kind of cross blend between these two. And then this one, I believe is Prodigy, or sort of like emulating a Moog type filter. All right, so if we start with clean, we can just quickly audition this. Change the slope. Then we can pick one of these other ones. And you'll notice that when you pick certain filters, you have different kind of settings. Like for example, in the Oscar one, this drive uh, parameter appeared here. So you can sort of beef up the sound that way. And then of course you can pick other shapes like bypass. Let me reset this drive parameter. And again, I don't have to demo all of them, but you get the point. You have all the basic functionalities. And then in the morph one, you can kind of freely morph between all the different filter types, which is kind of interesting. And again, you can enable two at the same time and get these kind of complex shapes if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna turn off the filters for now. And that's basically it. So the filter section, you'll notice as you're playing with different built-in Ableton synths, they, the same kind of configuration appears everywhere. So they've reused the different filter types, characters, and even the controls are very similar. So once you learn the basics of all the different filter types and how they sound and how they work, you'll start noticing that in other synths, which is kind of a useful thing to know. All right, so now that we've covered the sound generators, the filters, finally we have the modulation section. So again, to recap, we have these three tabs. Let's start off with the modulation sources. So again, you have three different envelopes, all ADSR, and then you have two LFOs. If we start with our amp envelope, which is the envelope dedicated to the amplifier, you have your standard ADSR shape, which you can control either by changing these values down here directly or by just mousing around here, which I find more intuitive. You can actually change the slope, which is kind of cool which you don't find in a lot of synthesizers. So this just controls how the amplitude is changing as you press a key down and hold it. And then up here you have different ways to trigger it. If you press none, then it just behaves like a standard ADSR where as you're holding down a key, it remains in the sustain stage. And then as you let go, it goes into the release stage. If you press trigger, then as soon as you press a key, it kind of goes through all the cycles, which is useful for kind of pulsing uh, an envelope, especially for modulation, if you're doing kind of percussive sounds. And then loop will actually, every time it gets to the end of one of the envelope cycles, it'll repeat. So effectively it gives you another LFO. <laughs> The only difference between the amp and the other ones is that you can actually change the sort of vertical position of these sliders. Whereas here, I can't drag this down or this up. Your, your minimum value is always minimum and maximum value is always maximum. Whereas with these envelopes, you can actually change the maximum value here and even the initial value and even the release value. So you can get these really crazy shapes which are useful for modulation.
where you might start in a kind of middle-ish value and then you might end in a higher value instead of a low value. All right, so that covers the envelopes. Next, the LFOs. Again, super elaborate. You have everything you would expect from an LFO, all the basic waveforms, random, square, triangle, sine wave. And then you have the frequency. You can actually change the frequency by holding your mouse in this graph here, which is kind of cool, and just dragging up and down. And if you want to sync it to the tempo of your DAW, you can press this little note here, which changes the rate from hertz to these note divisions. Then you can change the amount of modulation. You can kind of warp the shape between them. And then you can change the offset, which is the phase, uh, which is useful if you have two different LFOs and you want to kind of offset them. And then up here, this is a cool parameter. You have this kind of attenuation. So you can actually have it so the LFO ramps up slowly. And then you have this reset parameter here, which will actually reset the wave every time you press a key. On their own, they don't do anything. You have to actually assign them to a parameter. So the way to do that is in the matrix here. So the matrix effectively is just a grid where you have the mod sources at the top. So all the stuff I just talked about, envelopes, LFOs, are all up here. And then down here on this first column here, you have the destination or the target, which is the thing you wanna assign it to. So for example, let's do a simple example and turn on the filter here. So let's say I wanted to assign LFO one to control this knob here. So the way that you would do that is, first you click on the parameter you wanna change, and then it'll temporarily appear here in the matrix. If you assign it to one of the sources here, then it becomes a permanent member of this matrix here. Otherwise you can switch, for example, filter two or resonance, and you effectively just click on the thing you want to modulate. And then to assign it, you just go here and you drag up and down the amount you want. So you can either go negative or positive. And some of them are relative, some of them are sort of multiplicative. So you might get different ranges as you, depending on what setting you're changing. But effectively, let's say I want to assign LFO one to filter frequency one. So you find the intersection here, and then you kind of increase the amount. So now my LFO is going crazy. So if I want to actually change the parameters of the LFO, you can either go here and click on the LFO, or there's a nice shortcut. If you click on the, in the matrix tab, if you click on the actual source at the top, it'll take you there immediately. So now I can change the rate of this. <laughs> So if I increase the sort of uh, attenuation here, you can see here that effect. It's a really cool effect because it kind of blends in the LFO. One of the most obvious ones is changing the position of the wavetable. So for example, I can assign that to envelope three and then go to envelope three here and change its shape. Let me reduce this filter. So you can hear the kinds of cool sounds you can get immediately just by having a simple envelope controlling the position of the wavetable. So effectively, if I press the key down, it'll kind of track this shape here. And this shape will internally change this slider here, which is changing the position of the wavetable. And in this case, the wavetable I've loaded is sort of a vowel sound format emulator. So it kind of sounds like a human voice. So as you blend through them, when I press the key down, you're getting these kind of vocal sounds. <laughs> So it's almost saying I -O -U -ye -ya. I -O -U -ye -ya. And then you can of course play chords because it's a polyphonic synth. So everything we've just talked about here, you can do up to eight times if you pick eight voices here. I -O -U -ye -ya. And then if I increase the reverb here in my plugin. I -O -U -ye -ya. And then of course I can change my amp envelope to create more of a pad sound and add some release. I -O -U -ye -ya. And that was just one oscillator. So of course I can go here and change and pick a different uh, set of maybe pan this left and right, change its volume. And of course I can go and change the position of the oscillator to wavetable as well using that same envelope. Bring up the sub oscillator. 
So just like that, you can get these really interesting sounds that would have been impossible or really hard to do on other types of synths. So that's sort of the power of the wavetable synthesizers, the modulation of the wavetable. And I'm only just scratching the surface here because I want to keep this video simple and just about the interface and how to use the synth. So I'm going to do separate videos on actually kind of synthesis. Uh, but otherwise this video is going to get way too long. So uh, while we're on this matrix here, you have these two global controls at the bottom, one that globally offsets the time of all the LFOs and envelopes. So if, for example, if everything is too fast and you kind of want to tone it down, you can do it with this parameter here. And then finally, you have a global amount. So if you want to kind of tone down the modulation of all the things you have in the matrix, you can kind of do it with this percentage slider here, which is super handy. And that's basically it for the matrix. Uh, again, you can just assign these five sources to any, effectively any parameter you see in the synthesizer here. So let's move on to MIDI here. And MIDI is very similar to the matrix, except instead of having the mod sources at the top, you have MIDI parameters like velocity, the note on the keyboard, the pitch bend. So one thing you can do, the note one is kind of cool. The note corresponds to which note or the pitch on the keyboard that you're playing. And you can actually assign that to different parameters. So for example, let's say I wanted oscillator one, the position in the waveform or in the wavetable. <laughs> So you get bassier notes playing kind of lower in the wavetable and then as you go up you're getting a different position in the wavetable which is kind of cool and of course you can assign things to aftertouch so i can assign that same position so when i push a key down it's kind of cycling through the waveform then you have the mod wheel and velocity and pitch bend and again you can assign all the different parameters that you had access to here as well, which is kind of cool. And then finally, we get to this global section. This is probably the, the least interesting <laughs> part of the synth, but you have your global volume. And then you can actually toggle between monophonic and polyphonic. And whereas monophonic, you get access to a glide parameter. So when you play legato, it actually kind of portamentos or slews the notes together. And in poly mode, you can choose how many voices you want. So you can go from two to eight. And then finally here, you have different kinds of unison modes. I'm not, go not gonna cover these in too much detail here, but effectively they just give different flavors of how the voices are changed in unison. Like classic gives you standard kind of detuning between the voices. And if you're not familiar, unison just means like stacking voices together. So when you play one note, you're actually getting kind of a fatter sound by stacking voices. And the unison modes here just determine out of all the voices you've stacked, how they differ between each other and they just differ in different ways. Some of them are cool, like position spread, where actually for every voice that is stacked together, it'll pick a different position in the wavetable for you, which is kind of cool. And then you can pick how many voices with this slider you want uh, stacked when you enable unison. And then the amount is the amount of um, kind of change or between the different voices that get stacked in unison mode. So that's basically it. The only thing I didn't cover is this cool little trick here. If you look at this mod source tab here with these five modulation sources, if I bring this out here, you can see that that tab got removed and instead you can see the five sources all laid out here. So you don't have to go and tab through them and you can quickly adjust all the envelopes in one shot. And then there's this cool responsive design where as you're dragging up, eventually it actually brings in the oscillators up here as well. And if you drag it on fully, then you can take up the whole interface and just focus on this one synthesizer. And it's the same exact interface that I covered before, except much larger and everything is available at the same time. So you have oscillator one here, oscillator two here, and then your five envelopes. And then this view here becomes a permanent combination of the matrix that we saw and the MIDI matrix. So you can assign your MIDI and your mod sources to any target directly here. And when you're in this view and everything is full sized, there are no tabs to switch anymore. So everything is accessible here. You have your filter oscillators, all the mod sources, and you have all the standard controls. So this is a good kind of master view if you're really kind of zoning in on sound design and you don't care about your arrangement view and you're not in the middle of composing, you're just focusing on making patches. This is a great view.
All right, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Hopefully you learned a thing or two and hopefully the synth is not as daunting as it may have been before because I know when I first saw it, I was like, what the hell do all these sliders do? Uh, but yeah, hopefully this gives you an idea of what the power of the synth and I'm gonna do separate videos on doing more sound demos and kind of synthesis tutorials. So yeah, if you're new here, consider subscribing. I do lots of different synth videos, tutorials, demos, and even kind of musical stuff. If you're not new here, welcome back, <laughs> stay tuned, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.